Now it is that time of year when short pole fishing, whether you're a match angler or pleasure fisherman, if you can get this short pole working, it can be absolutely deadly. I mean, I've, I obviously fish a lot of matches and you can go, you know, you can catch very little during your match and you just keep feeding your short line and you might have to do it all day. You might catch on there at the start and you might catch on it at the end, but it's those matches that it kicks off that you can go from absolutely nowhere to winning the match or even winning your section or framing. And these fish today, that's a nice fish that. This is a typical lake with silverfish and carp. It's a lovely carp that. Now that was on an eight mil piece of meat. I'm going to possibly try and hold him up. He's a little bit lively. Let me get that out of the way. Now if these rock up, these are the sort of fish that can be really tricky to catch throughout the day and then they come short on that short pole. Let's get him back and I'll talk you through exactly what I've been doing today and it's a lot of my fishing, you know, from like sort of late spring into summer and even sort of September, October. It can work amazingly well. Now obviously, obviously we all know there's lots of different baits that you can use. But one of my favorite baits, and I think it's a bait that can transform your peg, especially late in the session, is hemp and corn and also meat. Now I've already used nearly a tin there. The nice thing is, Sonia baits now do hemp and corn in a tin. And this is easy. Obviously I've just used a tin. I'm not gonna waste anything. I can tip another tin in there. Make sure that goes back in the recycling thing when I get back home. So it's perfectly cooked hemp with the, I think, the perfect amount of corn in there. It's probably like 70% hemp to 30% corn. And that's what I've been feeding. Now, the one thing for certain today is it's been about potting. There's quite a lot of roads in this lake and straight away I thought I'll just take it nice and easy. I'll put like half a pot in, so I've actually give it half of 200 mil pot, started fishing. It's taken about 15, 20 minutes. I started catching my first one. I did start throwing a few cubes of eight mil meat over the top and it was a waste of time. The roach were attacking it on the drop and it's better. I've actually got a cad pot on, but I've better to sack it off. And every sort of, I would say 20, 20 to 30 minutes, I'm putting half a pot in. So that's how much I'm putting in, about that much. And that's lasting, I reckon, 20 minutes, probably catching three to five carp before I have to feed again. So let's talk about the rig, because the rig is really important. Today I'm fishing in about six foot, and I'm actually fishing a 4B14 float. Let me just grab that a minute before it gets tangled up. So we'll start up at the last, there's the cab pot. To be honest, I just want to take that off because I'm not really using it because I just think it's a waste of time today. Obviously, if, it, if, it, if you're in a match and you weren't getting bitten out, that's the time when you can start throwing. You can either big pot the hemp and corn in and throw like four or five cubes of meat in over the top. And you can vary that as your match goes along. But hemp is something that I've done for many, many years, even for bream fishing. It, it, to me, hemp and corn mixed together, it just always feels like you've got some on the bottom. Then like thousands of little particles of hemp, it just gets the fish rooting around and they can't leave it alone. And if you can use it on your lakes, wherever you go fishing, definitely try it. But anyway, rig wise, I've got 15 Dura slip on there. It's a nice elastic. It's quite, I've got a few lilies and that around here. So I've got to go a little bit careful. I've got a 4B14 Carp XS. It's one of the new floats, um, 019 mainline. And that's what's so good about these floats is they take that sort of mainline really, really well. They sit dead straight because they've got a heavy fiberglass stem in. And then down to the shotting pattern, really, really simple because I am fishing with a little bulk today. I've literally got a little bulk of number nines like that. I've actually taken a couple of number 11 stops off because I want a little bit more float show, especially with eight mil meat. The bites are like pace bites. They're really, really quick and aggressive. And I've got two number 10 droppers. So it's nice, nice, easy. six inch at length of 017 reflow power and one of the new XS02 hooks on. 
So basically the XS is the XS Mark II hook. It's thicker and a lot stronger. And that's what you need when you're bagging on this sort of line. I've got a 14 of one of those hooks on and I can put a piece of corn on or a piece of eight mil meat. And I'm literally just hooking the meat like that. Nice and simple like that so you've got a little bit of point showing but i when i strike i am proper giving it i'm not i'm not going to sort of wait for a bite when it goes under i'm not striking softly it's like a proper big strike if i miss a bite that's the nice thing about fishing short and when i'm when i talk about fishing short i would prefer my sort of short line depending on what venue you go is a top two uh, sorry a top kit plus two sections that's my favorite line but every venue I go, use a nice plummet, like 20, 20 grams, something like that, and plumb up, because every venue is slightly different. This venue today, the bottom, about top kit plus three, it's just before the silt. But that will obviously change to what venue you go to. And I always try and find, if I can, as long as it's not too short. I know some venues in the summer you can catch really, really short, and you might even have to set a rig up for that for later in your session. But I do try and find a top kit in two. And as long as it's just off that silt, pl push your plummet in, lift your plummet about half off the bottom and then let it drop in. And you'll see then if the plummet goes into the silt. And I do try and find just where it sort of stiff, you know, firms up on that bottom. Because every single lake you go to, especially if it's been there for several years, it will go down. If I walked around the inside of this lake, it would be literally stones. It would go down the shelf and then all of a sudden it would go to silt and I try and just find just off that silt. But it depends on how close that is. Sometimes you've got to bite the bullet. There's several venues I go to, they won't come in like a top kit in one. You have to fish a top kit, a top kit in two or a top kit in three. And that will depend on the venue and the size of fish. And you might have to start on a top kit in three, but come down on a top kit in one in that last 45 minutes of your match or your pleasure session. So there you go. I hope it, I hope it sort of helps you out. Right? The only thing I would change is probably sort of getting on for six foot deep while I'm fishing. If I was going to a shallow venue, maybe sort of three to four and a half foot, definitely set up a 4B12 excess carp. Now that's the sort of thing where you can flick your rig out. It's not working today because there's too many silverfish about, but you can flick your rig out on a lot of venues and you'll catch those fish either on the drop with meat or corn. But try the meat, uh, the hemp in corn with meat on the hook. It's a great way of catching big weights of carp during the summer months.